This is Melissa Hale Spencer, the editor of the Altamont Enterprise. Just delighted to have here with us today Rich Schreibstein. And our readers will be familiar with that name because Rich has been associated with the newspaper for years. But he's here in the capacity of a photographer. And I'm just going to start with a story I hope it's true. His wife, Ellen, is the face of the enterprise. She sits at our front desk. And one day, someone came in and wanted to know where in Altamont could they buy postcards of Altamont. And really, there weren't any. So what did Rich do? He made postcards of Altamont. (laughs) Welcome, Rich. Thank you. And those postcards are still available at Bella Fleur right on Main Street. So. <laughs> yeah. And they're great scenes. Yeah. They're not typical postcard scenes. None none of Rich's pictures are, in my opinion, what you would expect. There's always something surprising. But I'd like to start with just hearing about you as a photographer. When when did you first get a camera? Well, <laughs> my, my first recollection of having a camera was uh, uh, in Japan. My father had been in the Korean War, and when the war, uh, when the truce was signed, he um, uh, took a tour of duty in Yokohama, Japan, and it was a uh, 18-month tour. So my brother and my mother and I were living in Levittown, Long Island, because he had bought a house as soon as the war broke out, and we lived there for maybe a year or so, and then we went to Japan, took a cross-country train trip, and then got on a troop transport in Oakland, California, landed in Yokohama um, about mid-November of 1953. And you were how old? And I was, uh, I would have been 53, I would have been six years old. Oh, what a great adventure for a boy. Yeah, I was six years old. My much older brother had just turned seven. We're nine months and three weeks apart. So uh, my father greeted us at the dock. I remember that, have photos of it. And sometime while we were there, I did first and finished first grade and all of second grade in Japan. He bought my brother and I a, a brownie cameras. And I always say, and I have no evidence of it, so um, that I that my first picture was of Mount Fuji, because uh, <laughs> you could see Mount Fuji from nearly everywhere. With your brownie but box camera. With a brownie box camera. And then uh, we went stateside. We kept the brownies, and then we eventually went to Germany in 1957. And I, I remember taking some pictures. My dad had a Zeiss Icon camera, so I took a lot of that with the bellows and uh, took a lot of photos then. And when we left uh, Germany in 1961, my dad was stationed at Fort Bliss, Texas, which is El Paso, Texas. And I was starting my freshman year in high school, in a brand new high school. Uh, we were the first class, the first graduating class of Eastwood High School in El Paso. And we added a year each year I was there uh, until we were the first graduating seniors. And in that first year, I took a journalism class uh, with this fantastic teacher. Uh, Her name was Jackie Goodwin, and she probably influenced me more than any person in my life, other than probably my mother and father. And they had a dark room, and I was the first one to go into that dark room, and I used one of those old reflex cameras with the two, uh, a roll of flex, I think it was. And I took all kinds of photography, from portraits to sports to everything. And I did that for all four years in high school. And then when I went to the University of Texas at El Paso, I majored in journalism. And one of the components of journalism in those days was photography, probably still is. So I took several photography courses there. And then uh, I entered the Army. um, And after I got a Uh, commission through uh, infantry OCS, I was stationed in Germany. Uh, So I had gone back very close to where we had lived when we were kids from 57 to 61. This was now 1971. I went back um, and I was there about six months. I flew home and Ellen and I got married 
And uh, interesting story, her parents and my parents had known each other since the end of World War II and were stationed together at Fort Monmouth, New oh Jersey. So, so I had, had known, known each other as I'd kids? known Ellen since I was maybe two years old, three I years old. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got married. We went back to Germany, and she gave me a Canon FTB, which was – Really, a 35 millimeter film camera, and I must have shot thousands of slides, some of which are somewhere around the house. So, if anybody wants to come for a slideshow, we can. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shot slides, and then uh, after we left Germany, went out west to uh, Fort Lewis outside of uh, Seattle, Washington. Actually, we bought our first house in Olympia, Washington. I took a lot of photo photos out there. Same thing, a lot of slides. Digital had not even, you know, entered the photo, uh, entered the picture yet. Um, and then after I left the service in December of '76, we we went back to Jersey. Um, well, actually, we went to New York. I worked for Avon Products up in Rye, New York. And then I transferred to New Jersey, probably two miles from where Ellen's family lived. And uh, didn't do a lot of photography then. Then when I came up here, and we moved here the day after Thanksgiving, so it's been 35 years yesterday, we lived and we bought a house on Main Street in Altamont. And I've hurt myself with almost every power tool known to man trying to <laughs> get that house oh, it's fixed a up. Beautiful house. Yeah, yeah. Well, my wife calls me <clears throat> Mister Good Enough because most of my work around the house is just good enough. And then we, uh, uh, I was working in the corporate world up here, uh, and I met Jim Gardner. One day on a lark, I went in and I said, look, I'm an old journalist. And, well, I wasn't that old at that point. And uh, he gave me a couple of assignments. I covered some of the village board meetings, uh, but also started shooting again using that same Canon film camera. And, uh, you know, I had a bunch of photos in the Enterprise. Uh, when I left the Enterprise, uh, I, I basically started a business teaching uh, effective business writing skills and did that for a number of years. And then when I fully retired, probably uh, it's been seven, eight, eight years ago, nine years ago, I really started picking up with photography again and got my first digital camera. Uh, and then... Um, had a couple of good mentors. I had my brother, who has been a photographer his entire life, as well as an old Army buddy uh, from uh, Germany who uh, eventually ended up having a cover photo on National Geographic, uh, so, uh, which is pretty impressive. So with those two guys, and he visits quite often, in fact, about two years ago, he was a West Point grad, and he took me down. Uh, he had to give a talk at West Point, and he took me down, and it was right at graduation time. And I got some great shots of, uh, I thought, great shots of the uh, graduation. It's a fairly impressive uh, ceremony. And uh, subsequent to that, maybe a year or so after that, I had uh, heard about this photography club in uh, Schenectady. And uh, I joined. It's uh, the Schenectady Photographic Society, and it's been around since 1931. So it's, what, 88 years old this year. It's the oldest continuously running photographic society in the United States. And I joined that about three years ago, and last year I was elected president of the society. And... Um, it's uh, If you ever want to hone your skills, I suggest you join a, f a photographic group because uh, um, they have competitions. Uh, every month there are two competitions. There's a film and there's a digital competition. And you put your photographs up against uh, some pretty professional or, or semi-professional photographers. And uh, you, you, you get to see what your stuff looks like against against the competition, and it's it's quite a quite interesting. Anyway, yeah. Well, yeah. I went through before this interview to look at some of the back in the day at the Enterprise, and what struck me even then the pictures you took were never <clears throat> the expected photo. One of my favorite ones was on the front page, and you had been down to D.C. 
and it was the Vietnam Memorial, the wall. But it wasn't just a picture of the wall. It, you had it so that it was reflecting. It, it, it was like a double image. The, the surface of the wall was reflecting, and you could see the mirrored image of a person looking at the names. At the same time, you could see the names. And I just wonder, when you think of a picture, do you do you think in advance how you're going to do it, or do you what goes through your mind when you're th- well, thinking of what? To shoot? I know exactly the photo you're talking about, and that photo has a sad story. I had been searching for a name of a friend of mine uh, who was killed, one of my best friends in high school and college, who was killed in Vietnam in 1971, and I found his name, and because it's polished granite. Uh, black granite, for those who haven't been to the wall, which is a amazingly uh, amazing scene. Um, that's So I had an idea of, of what I wanted because that f- photographer I mentioned from West Point who had taken the photo that ended up on the cover of National Geographic was there the day that memorial opened. And uh, he took an iconic photo as some of you may recall it, uh, of a guy who had been a Silver Star winner in Vietnam who was looking, uh, he had a flower in his hand and the reflection was just magnificent um, in, in memory of, of his uh, uh, fellow soldiers who, had, who, who didn't return. So I had gone there with my brother and my father uh, to take uh, that photo and uh, my father was a uh, uh, World War II uh, landed in Normandy, fought all the way through uh, to Czechoslovakia. My brother was two tours in Vietnam, had been a, uh, a helicopter pilot on his last tour, it ended up getting shot down. And when we went, I was looking for a single name. He found the names and had not known it at the time, but there were, I believe it was four names, and they and they're and they're etched in the wall in the chronology of when they died. And the four names were in sequence, and he knew at that point that his helicopter crew that he had left when he came back to the States had then subsequently been killed. Um, so it was... Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. And that's how he found out by that's, seeing That's the how he knew it the first time, and then, of course, he did the research. So it was... It was here we were looking at this memorial, and, and my brother is breaking down, my father is breaking down, and I was a, a bit teary-eyed myself. So, uh, so I had an idea when I took that shot. But moving on to more pleasant uh, <laughs> photographic journeys, you have a sense of what you want when you go out. I do a lot of street shooting, which is basically candid shots of folks going about their business, and I'm sort of, uh, uh, I don't want to say surreptitious, but I try to be, uh, you know, in the background so folks aren't always posing or stuff. I take candid shots, and, and I look for light. A lot of times I will stand in a spot. You've got a photo there. of. Right. Well, as, I, uh, as he's talking, I'm going to hold this up so Rich can describe this. Yeah, and that's... meanwhile, we're going to have, you can be still listening to this, but you'll also be able to look on our website and see this is a black and white picture and just describe this. Yeah, I do a lot of black and white. This is <clears throat> a, a theater on Madison Avenue that's closed down, has never reopened, says it's always going to reopen. And there was a mother and a son standing under that marquee. The son is off to the left, a little boy. He's probably about four or five years old. And he's in front of a shopping bag, sort of protecting it, crouched down behind it. But he's looking right at me when I took the shot. The mother is standing looking out uh, from the marquee out to the roadway. Uh, She's got a cell phone to her ear. But what I thought was the interesting was also the juxtaposition of the boy. And then there's a, uh, on on the wall, uh, there's a, uh, a movie, uh, what do they call it, a movie poster yeah. that, uh, that has a little boy in it. Standing but it's, alone. Uh, yeah, standing alone. <laughs> and, and it uh, emphasizes the aloneness of this boy, yeah, even though his yeah, mother's, his mother's there, there. She's on the phone. He's crouched down. Right. Yeah. 
And the, 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 the street scene is semi-faded. It wasn't particularly a, a good, good day for, for, for that kind of photography. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a neat shot. I took that about two years ago. And what I've learned in the past is you, you don't ever get rid of your photos because you go back and you'll see something that you may not have caught the first time around. And I do that a lot. I find a lot of photos that way. But it's, a, it's an interesting shot. Well, um, looking through these photos, I'll pull up another one. Um, <clears throat> there's another street shot. If you could describe this one. Ah, that's uh, <coughs> probably my favorite place to shoot in Albany. It's on Lark Street. If you know that colorful uh, storefront flower shop, uh, there's a... Uh, it's it's on, down the sidewalk, right in front of that flower shop, and the shadows are just amazing. Oh, we've got a a small, looks like a Pomeranian, small white dog who's outside in a triangle of the shadow. He's he's in the uh, in the light, and you can see his shadow inside that triangle of the shadow. And then if you follow the leash. Uh, you'll and the leash see, is lit. yeah, the, the leash, leash is lit, is and then it goes. And if you look really closely at it, you'll see the outline of his uh, owner, I suppose, who is also on a cell phone. Uh, the dog is looking right at me. The owner, and you can see his shoe is in a little bit of the light, so you will make him out. But uh, he's on his cell phone. He's really not paying much attention to anything. But the dog is paying attention to me. Yes, and, this, uh, both yeah. of these pictures strike me as similar in yeah, that way. It's yeah. like a well, theme. Well, one the little boy and, the, and this one. With the modern world, yeah. the people on the phone... Yeah don't know what their surroundings are yep. but the photographer does you have to and the little dog and the little boy are aware of the photographer yeah. but the people in charge the man on the, with a leash yep. and the woman who's they're the mother, oblivious they're they're, uh, they're, they're, yes. they're in a different world yep. and that says to me so much Susanna Lazard wrote this book recently about <laughs> landscapes and how devices have changed us but here you the photographer are noticing the landscape Landscape and the subjects where the other people are in their separate world, not there Absolutely. at all. I love that. I catch that quite a bit. I love uh, that. And and that's where you you position yourself. And sometimes you just wait for somebody to walk into your scene. Uh, and man, do you have to get it. Do people ever get angry that you're there with your camera? I have never ever been confronted. I think a lot of people are hesitant to do street photography because they're afraid of confrontation. Mm -hmm. First off, you're you're uh, if you if you have a modern uh, camera with a flip screen, you can flip that screen out so it's parallel to the ground, and you can look at that screen, and you're not even making contact with the people who, who you're photographing. And depending on the lens, they don't even know that they're in, in the photo. Um, it's Unless a, they're a little boy or a dog. Yeah, little boys <laughs> and little dogs have a sense of what's going on. Adults are oblivious. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can attest to that. But uh, yeah, it's a it's an interesting way to do it. I've never really been confronted. I've never been confronted in anger. I have been. Sometimes people will ask me, "What are you doing?" And I'm saying, "I I thought you were just really interesting, and I'm going to take your or I've taken your picture." I rarely will ask, but sometimes I'll ask uh, if I see a character who I really think is compelling. I'll ask them, look, do you mind if I take a picture? I've never, uh, I don't think I've ever had anybody refuse me. What are you going to do with it? And I always laugh. I say, well, it's going to be on the 6 o'clock news. Mm -hmm. And they just laugh. But uh, yeah. no. I, I mean, I've heard stories of people being confronted. But generally, if you're smiling and you're being straight with people, uh, boom. Yeah. And here is another street scene that I just love. Uh, the other two we looked at have a touch that's troubling about them. Uh, <laughs> but this one just makes me feel happy. If you could just describe what this is. This is also on Lark Street because if you look in the left-hand corner, that's that same. It wasn't taken the same day, but that's that same uh, flower shop right the corner there. There you can see the awning. It's an older couple uh, who are walking arm-in-arm arm, uh, toward me but not really noticing me. 
Um, and because of the time of day, they're casting long shadows. So you've and got their shadows touch. Yeah, their shadows nice. touch, and there's a, a tree that's there, and that tree is running parallel to their shadows. And it's just, I, I love that shot. It's uh, just the it, protective a, posture, yeah, the way yeah, that they are yeah, together. It just looks like something like uh, old friends out of a. Simon and Garfunkel song or yeah, something, but it's no, just it's really, really, uh, really nice. Yeah, really. And then um, I guess we should do some landscapes because you've got a lot of those. And this one, I almost had it upside down because what's so remarkable about it is the reflection. So just tell us about Yeah, that, um, uh, you know, with modern cameras, when you take a shot in, in what they call the raw fa uh, format, uh, it retains all the data. Um, that shot will typically, uh, as most of them, will typically be in color, and then m you make a decision uh, in post-production whether or not you want to maintain the color or, or, or use a, a black and white or a monochrome uh, tint. And what generally my rule is, if the color is not particularly compelling, uh, I'll use a black and white. And this is Black Creek Marsh in Gilderland. And uh, it's a pretty stark place. And this was taken right along the railroad tracks. That gravel in the front of the scene is, the, is from the uh, railroad uh, uh, track, uh, that the, the, the bed that the railroad track lays on. And then there's a marsh uh, that takes up about the middle section of the scene where the clouds from uh, the the clouds are reflected in that marsh, which was what Melissa was uh, referring to. And it was done in winter, so the trees are just, and most of the trees in that area are dead anyway, um, and they're very stark, pointing right up to the sky, uh, uh, you know, pr fairly vertical. There's not a lot of uh, movement in the trees, but it's just, and the reflection of the trees, the reflection of the sky on the marsh itself, uh, it just, uh, uh, I love it. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I like it too, but it but is not stark. like a peaceful, happy marsh scene. Nothing. <laughs> People go there for, you know, the sense of yeah. communing with nature. It feels yeah. like a jail. I yeah. mean, it's got these yeah, bars it's got the, it's and got it's got the, got the stark yep. black and white. And like when you're composing this, do you have in your mind, oh, I'm following the rule of thirds and I'm going to no. divide it up this way? No. What, like how, no. how do you? Well, what you're looking for, <clears throat> and that's like, for instance, a day like today, which it's beautiful out, by the way, cold, but beautiful, but there's not a cloud in the sky. So, so when you have a sky like that, had that occurred, I would have gotten the reflections, but I would not have uh, had the interest in the sky. So I'd move the horizon up. Mm -hmm. But because the sky is so compelling in mm -hmm. this one, you can see that, that uh, the top third of the, of the photograph uh, is sky. Uh, rule of thirds. Rules are, you know, there's nothing particularly, uh, you know, rigid about using rules, nor is there anything wrong with using rules, particularly when you're first starting out. It's a, the rule of thirds just basically says, you know, you try to move the significant elements of your photo uh, to one of the, the lines that a rule of thirds will give you. Uh, but I don't, I don't pay much well, attention you, to the rules. you did it anyway. Yeah. Um, and another thing I really like about this photo is the different textures. Yeah. I mean, this gravel in the front, it just feels like rough. And then you've got this softness of the clouds. Yep. Yet it's not a sentimental softness. Yep. Somehow it's a somber softness. It's really... And one of the elements in a good landscape shot is put something in the foreground. You know, don't just... You'll see people will take pictures of the ocean and you just got the ocean and the, and the horizon and the sky and there's nothing that anchors a, a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a oh, viewer. Oh, well, this has an anchor, you know, you yeah. Have to, you have to And I also love the way the jagged edge yep. of the rock reflects the jagged edge of the hills. It's just, it's really like you painted it, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And then this, you told me, was one of your favorite pictures. That's uh, of the last year, anyway. Yeah, I, well, I, I, the you more know, you look, the more you see. So tell I, us. I spend a lot of time at the Altamont Fair. Uh, the fairgrounds are a block behind my house because I live right on Main Street. Uh, and I'll walk over there all the time. But obviously, the big event of the year is the, is the Altamont Fair. And... Um, 
not uh, not that I don't take pictures on the midway or any of that, but this is in the uh, competition uh, barns. This is where the this picture I call Grand Champion because the girl who is leading this cow um, is uh, uh, holding a banner that she was just awarded that named that cow as the Grand Champion. She's got uh, she's got a really nice look on her face, very pleased joy. with herself of Pure joy. joy. <laughs> and uh, behind her, uh, kneeling uh, sort of right behind her uh, is a photographer, actually, who's taking uh, pictures of her. But he's got a nice look on his face looking up at the, uh, at the, at the winner. And, 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 ha- and, and on the uh, left, left third of the photo, she's got, and, it, uh, and I'm making an assumption here, she's dressed very similar, same uh, T-shirt that the, the winner is wearing. Well, same face. And same face. <laughs> So I'm assuming that's a sister, and she's holding a little baby who's sort of looking off to, towards her, uh, probably her aunt, or the cow. Uh, and then there are some people in the background looking at the winner and the cow, and then there's one guy all the way off to the left who's staring forlornly uh, hand a, a, away his, from the picture. Chin on his hand. Who pro- yeah, with his, uh, his hand in a, on his face. Uh, probably his cow didn't win. And at uh, the center of it all, we have yeah. the wild eye of the cow. And you have this cow <laughs> that's just got this, like, uh, glaring, uh, glaring at you, uh, probably not quite understanding why you're She's in the sp- uh, she's in the spotlight. So now you decided uh, yeah. to print this one in color. As I printed to that black in color white. because look, you got those two red yeah. shirts. You've got the cow, the brown cow. You've got the uh, you know you got the straw on the uh, on the floor of the of the barn. Uh, and people leaning up against the railing, and they're in different colored clothing. It's just, yeah, it needed to be in color. It's uh, vibrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, by the way, is in a calendar that I produced. Um, oh, and we should move on to the calendar now that it's been. Yeah. <clears throat> so tell us how how did you get. How did you get into making a calendar? You know, it came to me. I uh, we uh, I work with Jim at Enterprise Printing and Photo, and I do a lot of layout and design work for him. And every year he has uh, there are some historical societies, and he has a friend uh, who who does a calendar. And Jim and uh, Jim does a calendar each year himself. And I said, well, I you know I think I uh, I'd like to do a calendar, but uh, they make a few copies and they. You you know, pass them out to family members. So I uh, uh, talked with uh, uh, the owner at uh, uh, Bella Fleur, uh, the, uh, the flower shop in town in, in the village, and uh, I said, uh, uh, I'd like to make a calendar, but I'd also like to sell those calendars. So last year, uh, Diana Green, who owns the Bella Fleur, agreed, and we made 20 calendars, and she sold every one of them. So this year, I said, well, that seems like a pretty good project. So I made 50 of them this year, and she's got them for sale. But there, last year, it was primarily just Altamont. This year, they've got some shots of Altamont, some of Schenectady, some of Albany, and I think there's one of uh, Saratoga as well. We'll look through them, but Mm -hmm. I just think it's lovely because... I work with a staff of young people, Mm -hmm. and they all use an electronic calendar. Mm -hmm. And I just find having a calendar on the wall, it's like you get a new piece of art (laughs) every month. Every month, absolutely. And it's also just a way, because I've saved my written hand calendars for years, and I can look back to like when my children were little and see the things they did. You can see how many times you took them to the doctor that year. (laughs) Yeah. All those things, yeah. too. Yeah. So tell us about the cover picture. The of cover this picture, uh, uh, the horse barns uh, in the fairgrounds. But this was actually an assigned topic uh, from the Schenectady Photographic Society, and the topic was 30-second exposure. Most people take long exposures at night, uh, and they get the, tra- the, the headlights of cars zooming mm-hmm. through and that kind of stuff. They look or like stars. snakes. Yeah, 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 a uh, light painting. I decided to do a daylight one. <laughs> Uh, and I had never tried it before, and uh, so I planted. Yeah, obviously, you have to do it on a tripod because the camera's going to be exposed for 30 seconds. The the uh, 
uh, not the film, but the uh, sensor is going to be exposed for 30 seconds. So what you've got, and it wasn't a relatively windless day, but there's still at the edges of the trees that are in front of the horse barn, you can see some blurring. And if you look at the clouds, you can see that the clouds, obviously within 30 second exposure, are going to move. So you've got a blurring of the clouds. Um, so what's really nice is you have the softness of that yeah. blur on the edges, and then the horse yes. barns are so geometric, and yeah. they're red and white striped, and yeah. so it's yeah. like this and it's contrast the red and white of man-made yep. and natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. nice. So interesting stuff. This and then is inside a proof of the calendar, so uh, yeah. it's not quite together. So I'm holding it a little awkward. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's the stockade. Um, you know, if uh, historically you get a lot of ice jams on that part of the river in front of the stockade the on mm -hmm. the Mohawk, and uh, this doesn't have much of that, but you can see some ice and some snow. It's all snow covered, and nice blue sky with a very interesting cloud configuration. Um, just shot down the sidewalk uh, with some footprints uh, leading to a tree. Um, so I love the footprints, uh, and I love the reflection yeah, yep, in the Mohawk. Yep, that's yeah, really well, that's. That's Talisenta. That's oh, uh, so. This is the Gilderland Town Park. Yeah, that's the Gilderland Town Park, and you've got um, the uh, what is that? The Bosun, uh, the uh, Norman Skill, running through there, and it's frozen, but you can see the reflections of the trees on the ice, uh, and it's got a blue cast uh, to it because that's what happens. The sky is blue. The ice reflects that, and uh, and it's a snowy scene. Um, lightened up the trees a little bit so you could get, uh, uh, you know, well, some distinction it there. it makes me always think, of course, of the poem about Hiawatha yeah. and how yeah. did Native Americans live at the Vale of Talisenta when it was yeah. so cold. But tell us, uh, you say lightening the trees. How much do you do, you know, post-production? Post yeah. um, it depends. Um, you know, uh, it's it's just part of the craft. Uh, you, you say you, you, I remember you said back in Texas when you had this teacher that was so mm -hmm. shaping you in the dark room. Yeah. Um, tell us how it's different digitally. Well, digitally pictures. in the dark room. I mean, if you've done any study of Ansel Adams or anybody like that. Uh, with his magnificent landscapes, and you know, a lot of people think, you know, why aren't you shooting like that? Well, he didn't shoot like that. He he had a film, and he was a master in dodging and burning. Mm -hmm. um, so you uh, you dodge to keep a, uh, an element light, and you and you burn to to darken the element, which is similar to what you do in the digital darkroom. Only we use masks. He would have he would write complex formulas on a piece of paper, so he knew, and he'd use cutouts and and cardboard or his hands, and he would uh, when feather the, the edges yeah he would feather the mm -hmm. edges with his hands and knew exactly how much time he had to spend with each negative. But if you look for probably his most famous, the moon over Hernandez, if you look at the diagram, if you look at the original negative and then you look at the diagram where he wrote out how much time he was going to spend, he was doing the same thing you do in a digital darkroom. You know, I mean, there are purists that say you should never touch your photograph, but my answer is, you know, if that's how you feel, go ahead. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking it right out of camera. But honestly, I, I read uh, Da Vinci's the biography this summer. Um, and uh, I found that he had carried uh, the Mona Lisa around with him for 25 years before he was satisfied with it, really? touching it up and doing all kinds of things that. to it. Yeah, absolutely yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, because people tend to think of photographs yeah. as reality, yeah. but really there's an eye involved yeah. in composing yeah. it to begin with, yeah. and then what yeah. happens and after? And I think you, uh, you know, I... Uh, <clears throat> I do it because I think it looks good, and hopefully the viewer likes it well. As it's well. startling in this picture yeah. because the snow is clearly winter, but yeah. yet you have a sense of, oh, my gosh, is yeah. spring coming? <laughs> yeah, well, it's always coming. We, we do hold yeah. that hope. That's and the uh, Schenectady train station. That was the day it opened. Wow. Uh, yeah, and that's... Uh, it looks so monolithic. It, it does not look modern, does it? They, uh, yeah, and they bathe it in multicolored lights. So I went more of a monochrome on that because I thought it was a little harsh, um, uh, just a little gaudy, actually. Yeah. So I, I changed the light to yellow. Interesting sky, though, that yeah. night as well. Yeah, oh, fascinating. Yeah, yep. that's... Uh, 
That, if you, if you go down Broadway where the, uh, uh, the SUNY admin building is, the old D&H Railroad, this is the building across the street from that, but old this is behind store. the building. And this is uh, this is called Liberty Street. And if you lo- and you're looking at this picture, if you go to the right, that's where the bus station is, off to the right. But on the back of that building is some old advertising. Uh, this one was a hardware store, and there's a blacksmith and all that. But the sky was I wanted to get a lot of the sky it was just uh, it looks blotted on there. It's just uh, amazing yeah, again, shots. Yeah, a great contrast yeah. between the man-made and, and then the natural. And there's the uh, uh, fire escapes and uh, just just a wonderful old shot. I try to take that shot. I'll go to a lot of places multiple times. Um, Waiting for I, the I, right light. And looking for a different light, looking for the right light. And sometimes you just have to keep looking at the angles to see what you got. That Woo. next one. <laughs> this yeah. one is a, such a stark contrast. That's a tulip fest. Uh, I had some, uh, well, I guess they were pink uh, tulips. And I, uh, I, I opened my lens really wide so I could focus on the tulips. And blur the background, which is the Moses statue. I can see uh, it in the in the background. Um, so yeah, it's just a different shot, but uh, the colors yeah, marvelous, yeah, just marvelous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a favorite. Uh, Elliot Irwin had a photo. He's a very famous photographer of a of a chihuahua. I wasn't channeling him when I took this shot. This was on J Street in uh, Schenectady uh, during uh, you know one of those events they have down there during the summer. And I saw these two chihuahuas on a leash, and I got down really low because yeah, I wanted. Yeah, that's what a, I love. Uh, yeah, because a lot of people will take. Their photos from chest high. Well, you got chihuahuas. <laughs> you can't get a really good shot of a chihuahua. So I dropped down probably on my knees, which probably was what it took an hour to get back up. <laughs> but you, uh, but I've got this, this two chihuahuas. One's looking right at me, uh, and the other one is uh, looking off to the right, sideways view of them. But what you're also seeing are the legs of the people, uh, the, the, yes. the people who are walking the chihuahuas, plus some other legs from people on the on the crowd. But it makes you realize dogs have a life yeah. of their own. It's like those Peanuts cartoons where they, grown-ups never appear. You just, <laughs> and you never see stuff from their level. Yeah, you that's know, great. I have, that's a grand, great. I have a grand niece, my brother's daughter, who is into photography as well. She's, uh, I think she's eight, this nine this year. And my brother teaches a photography class for the school they own down in D.C. But uh, she, t- she brought some shots in, and it's from an angle of a nine-year-old. Well, we're uh, much taller than most nine-year-olds, yeah. so she had completely different view. Anyway. Seeing the world that uh, way. That's a I call that the J Street tableau. Uh, also in Schenectady, out in front of uh, one of the cafes, and there's two tables of people uh, enjoying coffee and other beverages, and then there is a Betty Boop uh, <clears throat> A statue on the left, and then on the right hand side is a statue of a of a chef who's holding a chalkboard menu uh, from the cafe and in the background inside the cafe uh, people close to the window and if you look there there's a sign behind the lady in red uh, that says pickpockets I think beware of pickpockets oh wow yeah so, oh, it's so that just is a, a tableau and, and you've I got the, the human figures with yep, the iconic yep, figures yep and I and I did some dodging and burning on the on the uh, uh, fl- uh, uh, the floor the uh, ground uh, the, uh, Which is dappled in yeah, shade. Yeah, dappled with shade. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Interesting shot. That's the. Uh, oh, this is the, yeah, the champion. That's the grand champion <laughs> shot. This one is, you know, you tell people will tell you never shoot into the sun, do all that kind of stuff. Well, I shot right into the sun. Uh, you do this by really st- uh, uh, stopping down your lens. This is probably has to be taken at f16 because there's uh, this is Warner's Lake. And on Warner's Lake, uh, there are some swimming platforms out on the lake. This is probably very late summer, maybe even to the fall. 
Uh, you got a nice blue sky with the sun in the upper left quadrant uh, shooting off rays uh, of sun, and you can see those that light on the water. The water's got a slight ripple effect, so so there must have been a little bit of wind, and the platforms out there, and then you've got the tree line in the background. Uh, once again, that's a good rule of thirds. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just late summer on Warner's Lake. Yeah, you just feel yeah, like being yeah. there, don't you? This <laughs> it's is, great. This, um, is just, uh, this is just a pumpkin patch at uh, uh, Indian Ladder uh, Farms. Um, and so does this small print that I can't... Yes, good. You let people know where they all yeah, are in yeah, that small yeah, print. This yeah. is uh, Indian Ladder Farms. Uh, and this is probably post-Halloween. Uh, and did you get the, down on your knees again? Oh yeah, yeah. You got to get <laughs> low on some of these, yeah. yeah, yeah, to get these shots. There's probably a thousand pumpkins in this photo. Oh, it just uh, it looks like yeah. infinity. It just keeps going. Oh wow. This is Geyser Creek in Saratoga Springs. Uh, this is right outside SPAC. If you have that bridge that you have to walk over to get the main entrance into SPAC, um, uh, I went down below the bridge and I was walking along, and it was. It was uh, uh, early winter, but there's snow on the right bank, and then there's no snow on the left bank, so it was probably a, a, a later November shot. Um, and uh, just the creek running through And the uh, power of the sun, what it does yep, to the melt sun. the one bank. Yep, yep. And this will be the last month. Here we are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that, that's a frozen Washington Park Lake. Um, and you can see the bridge in the background there. That's actually in color, but it had, I had just been hit with a, a squall that was a total whiteout, so I had to wait for this shot. The squall finally dissipated, and you've got a bench that's covered with snow, and you've got some, you can see some uh, tracks and some footprints uh, and leading toward the, the bridge. And you can see the snow And the snow, yeah, the snow branches. on the branches of the trees, uh, and the cloud is just, uh, the sky is just, uh, you can tell it's a snowy day. Yeah, uh, it's, it's yeah. sullen, but yep. yet the scene is peaceful yep. because of the yep. faded trees. Yeah. And then the last one, there's that, one more. Oh, I there think, is? Oh, my gosh. I thought December would be the end. No, I, I oh. always throw one in here. <laughs> Bonus. I call that Lark Street Freezes. There, are, there is some artwork in those, in those buildings on Lark Street, some of the old brownstones, I guess they are. Uh, and they're not in the world's be uh, best shape, uh, you know. They're, but it's it's colorful and it's yeah. Uh, you it's think just of a, the painted ladies as being in San Francisco? Yeah, it's very that... very similar to those that road yeah. in, or that street in San Francisco. Uh, but uh, yeah, multi multicolored buildings. But the the freeze work is what I really like. Uh, and it dominates. And, edges, and yeah. interestingly, usually I wish there weren't lines power lines in the yeah. picture but in this one i like it yeah because it makes you just think of the different time yeah periods. i am not a big fan of photoshop not 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 that i uh, have anything against people using photoshop i'm not particularly good at it but uh i think sometimes if you do take stuff out power lines are a great thing to take out but in this case i i agree it's with you they just uh, time has yeah. passed yeah it's, yeah so. Unfortunately, the calendar's closed and our time is over okay. because this has been so fascinating. But yeah. do you have any closing thoughts that no, you'd like to I, leave people I with? No, I tell people that this, uh, you know, obviously I've been doing photography most of my, I've been, been photographing a, a, a large part of, uh, of my life. Um, but if you have an interest in photography, uh, and I'm, I'm going to put a, a, a plug in. Uh, you, you, you ought to think about the Schenectady Photographic Society. If you just type that into uh, your computer to Google it, uh, you'll you'll see. Uh, you know, you come to their web page, and it'll tell you all the things that they do, and show you some great photographs. And it is yeah, probably... Yeah, there's an entire calendar, a list of people speaking oh, yeah. and yeah. workshops yeah. and competitions. We meet, yes, and we meet three times uh, a month, and uh, we have uh, special meetings with, with guest speakers who are uh, usually uh, pretty, pretty accomplished photographers. And all of that is $50 a year to join, so it's not even an expensive when you think of the number of meetings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's a good way to hone your skills or just to meet people that have similar uh, interests.
Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. It was enjoyable.